Hi, welcome to Coping Mechanisms, a show where we talk about difficult things while making adorable drawings. It's like a blankie for adults. I'm your host, Kat Randall, and today I'm talking again with my husband, Colin. Hey, y'all tired of me yet? No, never. Oh, thank goodness. Um, today we decided to go something a little bit lighter than maybe the last two episodes. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, we needed a little bit of a break. Um, no, we're just talking about something that is very important to the both of us, uh, which is the arts and the humanities. Hooray! Hooray! Humanities and the arts and things. Something that we like. <laughs> it is something that we enjoy. Yes. It is something that we both appreciate very, both, very much. Yeah, it's kind of our careers, I think yeah. you could say. Separate sides of the same sort of world. Yeah. Um, you know, Colin is a, an art historian, and I, if you hadn't noticed, am an artist. Um, <laughs> kind of yes. <laughs> I think you probably got that you're an artist at this point, okay, maybe. God, I hope so. Um, anyhow, uh, yeah, well, so the difficult aspect of this is that we wanted to talk about um, this sort of general um, attitude of, of derision or of... Um, of mockery of the arts as, like, legitimate or, or useful or helpful or, like, you know, valuable parts of our cultural ecosystem, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess the idea is that the arts aren't worth our money or our thought or our, our class funding. time. Yeah, <laughs> all of these sorts of things. Um, and it's a, it, I, one of the things that drives me crazy is that even when people are arguing for uh, more funding for the arts, um, or for arts education, their, their reasoning or like their, their evidence to support why, this sh why we should fund the arts is usually because, oh, it helps you better, do better in math and sciences if you have the arts. <laughs> Wait, does it? Is yeah. that true? Oh, yeah, of course it does. I don't... Sometimes I don't know things. Yeah, no, I mean, I, <laughs> obviously, having arts education, like, ch like helps you in other areas because it helps you, you know, think in, in more creative ways. Uh, like, yeah, anyhow. Well, I just... I mean, I was just saying that because I didn't know if there had been, like, actual, like, data... Yeah, I mean, they, I don't know what all of it is, but I know that they trot it out every time that there's an argument for, like, why we should fund the arts. And, and, and like, I'm not saying that that, doesn't, that isn't the case, and I'm not, like, saying that it's not awesome that it is the case. But, like, we should fund the arts because we should fund the arts, not just because it makes you better at math and science. We should also <laughs> fund the arts because it helps you draw, what is this, a cute little piglet? A little cute little piglet. Oh, my gosh. This is adorable. I mean, well, I like his eyebrows. It's very like. Well, yeah, it's very I'm like looking at. Like a, okay, I'm like looking at little pictures of piglets, and they're very, very cute, and they've got like really strong like eyebrows. It's or, very like, like oh, it's almost like debonair. It's like okay. a Casanova kind you know, of thing. You know, I wasn't going for that, and now you're making <laughs> me feel like I have to change everything. No, no, I like it. You should, you should give him like a little pencil mustache too. Well, I think you're also probably confusing. The eyes have not been colored in yet, so maybe, hmm. maybe we're getting confused there, because they have like. Oh, I and also that makes it look kind of <laughs> like he's got a comb over. Uh, yeah, a little bit. So we're gonna. I was just trying to the sketch lines, babe. I love just it. Trying to get the. I understand art. You do? Oh, really? Mm, I would like to think that I do. Yeah. After how many years of study? Too many. Too many. And not enough. And not enough because yeah. it's like actually difficult to to be able to understand these things and. Mm -hmm. and put words to them that's like it takes schooling or something yeah yeah i mean and that that's another thing so like there's a there's an elitism i think I, part of the the uh the attitude against like arts funding or whatever is that it's it's kind of been put into this narrative where it's like art is elitist and like you know the common people can't understand it um I, I don't know that what do you what are your thoughts on that whole like kind of attitude about art and 
Um, I don't think it's entirely wrong. Art is pretty elitist. Mm -hmm. It can be. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. Um, but there is certainly like a a, a certain amount of um, like cachet that comes with being able to, to sort of talk about art. But but there's democratic art as well. There's uh, you know if you have an arts education, then it, you're you're it's easier to sort of talk about, oh, you know, did you see such and such movie? Like, what did you think about it beyond I loved it, period. Or yeah. I hated it, period. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I think there's a bunch of different ways that you can... That, that art isn't always, you know, this elitist institution. And, I mean, I feel like, to be clear, I did not come from wealth. Like, I don't study art because... I, I, you know, come from this Jiji background that, <laughs> you know, has has prioritized, you know, the works of the the you know the the great masters or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I feel like maybe that's part of where we should start is that um, I think we both kind of grew up in or mm. around the like the North Carolina magnet school system, which um, mm. like these schools for the time did have some discretionary spending and a lot of that did go to arts education. So like my middle school, yeah. my elementary school, middle school and high school all had pretty Good solid arts education. art programs and that oh, was yeah. visual art and theater and music and dance. Yeah. Um, and growing up and meeting other people, I've come to understand that not everybody had that kind of education. Yeah. Um, which I was mortified to hear, especially because, again, did not grow up with, like, an awful lot of, like, monetary privilege. No. Um, just happened to, you know, be kind of in a place that allowed for that. Yeah, like, the school had more money than you did, and so the school could offer <laughs> yes. you, like, <laughs> yes, obviously, but, like, the school could offer you, like, you know, experiences that maybe your parents couldn't, and I think that that's kind of what uh, schools are there for to a certain extent you know well to expose you to new things yeah to right? expose you to new things to like broaden your like experience of the world yeah it's strange because like i mean my mom was a design student uh my dad is an architecture professor oh that's right your mom was at nc state right? yeah she was in the design school at nc state um i'm assuming this is mud this is mud caked on yeah. Her? His? Her? I don't her know. belly. I'm gonna say it's a her. It's, uh, yeah. It's a gender non conforming piglet. Okay, it can be they. <laughs> um, uh, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, I grew up very much in, a, in an artistic, like, home, but. I don't know, like, but yeah, we didn't have a lot of means or anything. We just had a lot of, um, mm. I just had a lot of knowledge or background, um, because of who my mom was, um, and who my cousin John was and, you know, like lots of, lots of access to that sort of world. So you had artistically minded adults in your life as yes. well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Sure. Um, yeah, so that, that helped um get me interested in the arts or at least see it as like worthy of studying or like think about it in in more than just uh think about it critically as a as a critical subject to, sure. to worthy of discussion sure no so like this is the weird thing so like there's there's a sense that a there's the this elitism like you have to have some sort of knowledge to like or some level of education in what art is uh, to get to get you into a conversation or to get you into the door to like be able to appreciate it right um, it's like we went to, <laughs> we went to um, a museum of contemporary art in uh, Chicago once and like some guy came up to me and asked me like because I was laughing at um, this work by uh, one half of the the group Das Racist. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about this. Yeah, yes. and it was just like, it was just a video, and a lot of it was like, you know, 
what was it production lines, assembly lines of like Fig Newtons or something? Yeah, I don't remember what the product was. I don't but, remember. but for but context, like... they they were doing a DJ set, and in mm-hmm. in conjunction with the DJ set, they were also just they had a live video of, they have of a live sort video of, of whatever. You. Which no, but like he had done the video work. Like yeah, well, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So they had chosen the material that they were. Yeah, like, he had edited this video together, and, like, I was laughing at it because it was so funny. It it was just clever and funny and silly, and um, this guy came up to me and was just like, so why the Fig Newtons? Like, there was some secret that he was not in on. Some and hidden I, significance. Some hidden significance, right. and I was like, dude, art can just be enjoyed. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to have a hidden significance. <laughs> I mean, I think it's tricky, right? Because yeah, but sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. Sometimes and it does. I, I think, to a certain extent, this was a guy who was just trying to strike up conversation with somebody. No, he was trying to be cool. And he was like, trying to be He was trying to be him. cool. I, I feel like you get a lot of that if you go to enough uh, exhibits or... or um, yes. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of that. Um, yeah, well, posturing, right? Yeah, it's really like what this it is. posturing of like, oh, I, I know how to talk about art like it's important, not talk about it kind of just from a human perspective of like how this makes you feel. How do you actually think about this? Like, what, what, do, you th- what do you see? Like, name the things that you see and like tell mm. us what... You know, talk about it like a human instead of talking about it like, um, like a robot that went to school. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. You know. I guess. I mean, I I think I want to be clear here. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not ragging on. Are, yeah, I, I, I feel like there are people in the art world who are every bit as pompous and. Oh. Kind of generally terrible and elitist. Oh, absolutely. And then there are people on the outside who would like to be a part of that mm-hmm. kind of elitist, we know better than you world. Yeah. And so it's it's not it's not just outsiders grasping at a thing that they can't achieve. It's also quote unquote insiders oh, who absolutely. are totally speaking out their rear end. <laughs> right? So yeah, no, it's not, it's, it's, um, I don't know. I just find, I find it interesting because I think there's, on one hand, there's the elitism thing. Um, on one hand, there's the, um, the fact that people view it as elitist. And then on the other hand, there's the fact that people tend to view it as something, that you wouldn't have to study in order to be able to, like, understand? Yes. I mean, that is... Um, we've had this conversation before, but... Yes, but not on, on air. Sure, not <laughs> not on the web series. But um, I think that music also falls under this category. I think mm, movies. movies fall under this category. I think literature... I mean, basically the fine arts fall under this category mm-hmm. of things that people feel like... Because you consume them. Because you consume them, because you can see them, because it's a it's a visual or an auditory, it's a readily consumable medium. Mm-hmm. Um, that your sort of gut level reaction is all that you need to go on in terms of, you know, is this a is this a good work of art? Is it not a good work of art? Mm-hmm. And you just say, well, did I like it? Did I not like it? Did, yeah. If I didn't like it, then no. If I did like it, then yes. And not sort of examining that any further. Mm-hmm. Um, that being able to recognize a thing and, and realize whether or not it fits your definition of good art is enough. Because you've seen it and you you gut check make a, an aesthetic judgment. Mm-hmm. And that's all you need to go off of. And mm-hmm. that's, of course, not true. Um, <laughs> what? I mean, that's not to say that you can't have your own opinions and that you shouldn't, you know, you don't like something, you don't like something, and that's absolutely fine. But yeah, the, the point is to try to examine why it is that you might not like it, right? Yeah. Or why it is that you do like it. The point is that there's, like, I, I think that... Um, 
the arts tend to get dismissed partially because um, they're viewed as being just a, a world of subjectivity mm -hmm. and relativism, like anything goes. Um, and that's just not true. I mean, it is and it, it isn't. It is and it isn't, but it's, <laughs> but it's like, for me, you know, the the subjectivity lies in what is it that you're trying to accomplish, like you as with your as an artist, as an artist, what are you trying to accomplish, and then you can qualify whether or not it's good by how well you achieved that. Mm -hmm. Um. But then there's... That's how you qualify how good your skill level is. At sure, least, but then you can artist. complicate but that. But then, yes, you can complicate that by the audience, like, having their own def defining, like, what the art is. Yes. Sure, not only that, but you can... Final collaborator. Yes, not only that, but you can say, okay, well, maybe the artist meant to do, or meant to convey X, but what they wound up conveying really well was Y, um... Does that make it a bad work of art because they wound up conveying something that they didn't intend to convey? No, it just means that they didn't necessarily understand what they were doing. or a, And then maybe how they respond to that in future works can tell you whether they learned from that. <laughs> sure. Okay. This is a very long conversation, and without a concrete example, I don't think it's particularly... Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I just... I think one of the things that I, I wanted to bring up and why we're sort of talking about this is obviously there's been a bunch of back and forth in the media about defunding the uh, National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Favorite kicking ball. Yeah, I mean, Republicans love to do this all the time um, just to say, look, they're not money-making ventures. We're just pumping money into the hands of artists who are going to make controversial material that we don't want to to give money to and wouldn't that money be better spent on uh tax breaks for the wealthy or the military or you know name a thing i don't know <laughs> carbon who knows carbon? carbon carbon coal i meant coal i mean coal is carbon right i'll give you that one okay right. so definitely not a science major but i, I got pretty close there i think um mm -hmm. Anyway, so it's been in the in the news again recently, and so I, I just thought, eh, maybe let's talk about it a little bit. Um, yeah. And this isn't, I want to be fair here, this isn't, again, sort of a, it's not necessarily a Republican-Democrat or a left-right thing, because mm, no. I distinctly remember being an art historian. Say it again? I, well, no, I was just, I, I wanted to, I was going to cut myself off because I'm still a graduate student, and I'm always reluctant to say that I'm an art historian. Uh, but you are. I'm studying art history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway. but you are. Sure, sure, sure. So I, I was I was jumping the gun there. I apologize for the... I'm an art historian. I'm an art historian. <laughs> I'm an art historian. And um, I remember when... Uh, I can't remember the context for it, but I remember... Um, uh, Barack Obama. Yeah, um, it was Barack Obama. He made some slight against people who majored in art history. Mm -hmm. And the entire field what? threw up their hands in disgust. Yeah, they were so mad. Um, because again, and this was the thing that, that the Obama administration did time and time again, is prioritize STEM education over arts education. Just constantly. Constantly. Um, Anytime I hear about STEM and STEM and STEM, and it's not that I don't think it's important. I think it's very important. I think it's, inc I really very much appreciate. Yes. I think <laughs> we all reap the benefits of people who got excellent education in STEM, right? Mm-hmm. It's just that that can't be all that there is. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that, that was one of the reasons why I thought, you know, let's talk a little bit about the humanities right now. Obviously, yeah. we can't cover the whole thing. But... No, it's uh, too big to talk about the whole thing. But at least for a lighter conversation, you know, around the holidays, something that I am definitely thankful for is my, like wonderful arts education that i got um yes me. especially considering that that probably isn't there today <laughs> yeah i don't know i have no idea but, i have no idea um, but 
I just, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, like, you know, I always, I, whenever they, uh, threaten to, you know, defund the NEA, right, the National Endowment for the Arts, mm -hmm. which is just low-hanging fruit for, uh, Republican partisan, uh, politics, right, um, Yes, and it's a drop in the bucket in terms of our our actual, our actual budget. budget. It doesn't it really doesn't mean affect. anything. It just doesn't. But every time they they you know try to def defund it, and the the re the Democrats always respond with being like, "Oh my gosh, let's not defund this." And it's like, okay, that's great and everything, but I can't remember the last time that a national Democrat. Um, actually ran on expanding <laughs> funding for the arts. Oh, gosh, yes. Like, <laughs> actually, like, made a case for, like, why we should spend more money on the arts. Right. Um, and so we're just playing defense with the arts education, and it's, or and the arts in general, and, you know. Yeah. I, yeah, so... I feel like it always winds up being this kind of crass conversation um, where you you always have to return to... So you're pitching it to people who are all about, or at least ostensibly about, mm, money. fiscal conservatism and mm -hmm. money. And so it always sort of comes back to this, like, okay, what's your return on investment, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what's the ROI in, like, if I pump a dollar into arts education, how much am I getting on the back end? Yeah, it turns Which into a quantifiable thing. It's already crass, and I hate that kind of a, a, you know, a dialogue. But if you have to do that, you could resort to something like, um, like a soft power conversation. Um, you know, you say cultural capital is capital. Mm -hmm. um, and so the more that we invest in the humanities, the greater our cultural capital. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I've already used the word capital more times than I care to. <laughs> like in any given month. Ever. So. Like always. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it turns it. That's what I was saying earlier and failing to get my point across is that when, when we have these discussions about like funding arts education, it always gets diverted to like how arts education helps STEM. Like how arts education helps uh, like students uh, in their history classes, or, I mean, arts and history, but you know what I mean. Yes. Um, but, like, and instead of just being like, no, we should fund it because it's important. <laughs> because we, we Because we, we don't recognize the importance of the arts in general, and that's kind of my little soapbox for the night. Um, yeah, no, it's just, at the end of the day, what I always come back to is that the humanities are called the humanities for a reason. They're what, what reason makes us human. Without that, we are engineers, we are, you know, scientists, we are mathematicians, and those are all incredibly valuable and important fields, and I love you guys who are those, you know, people. But the humanities are what separates us in many ways from the rest of the animal kingdom, and we have to invest in that kind of education. We have to remind ourselves of who we are. Um, mm -hmm. It helps us relate to each other, it helps to relate to people across cultures, um, it helps our, you know, critical thinking skills. Um, gosh, we could use a little bit more of that right now. Critical thinking is pretty important. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. especially in times like this, but I um, love my pig. Yeah, she's cute, right? I'm going to call it a girl. Okay. Well, I thought, all right. So I, oh, she's no, adorable. No, she's, she can be non gender non-conforming. They're adorable. Yes, they're adorable. Sorry. What is her name? Or their name? What is their name? Wait, we've been over this. You're asking me to name an, a an, character? An animal? No, this is bad. Do I have to refresh your memory? It's been a couple of weeks, but... Is it just Pig? Well, it will be Miss Pig. Miss Piggy. Miss Pig. No, Miss Piggy isn't already a thing. Sorry, Definitely sorry, sorry. Taken. Please, please don't come Definitely after me. Taken. Please don't come after I us. I don't think they're going to care. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, uh, should we just call them pig? I mean, that's or kinda, let? It, it sounds like a babe thing too, piglet? right? No, piglet's, piglet's already a thing. also a thing. Also a thing. <laughs> um, 
uh, so pink and also covered in mud. Um, gotta choose something, babe. Uh, okay. Bazooka Jane. Bazooka Jane it is. Like Bazooka Joe, but like Bazooka Jane. Bazooka Jane. Yeah. All right. It's happening. I don't know whether or not that's actually a good name, but it's the first thing that came to my mind. I think it was pink. I love it. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. I think I think Bazooka Jane is very happy in their uh, mud puddle. They seem great. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Um. Yeah, I think I'm all right. How about yeah. you? I'm okay. I just, you know, want the arts to be funded, but I'm okay. Me too. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us. Um, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.